what would happen if you took a classic chuck a boot and took a fat syringe of boot steroids and injected it, you might end up with something like the Jim Green's Fellies. So we're gonna cut them apart and see if they really are the heavier duty, the more robust version of your classic chuck -a boot So this is the official start of the chuck -a boot series. And instead of doing the same kind of chuck -a boot from different companies, I wanted to really gather a wide varieties, a wide variety of, of different kinds of chuck -a boots anything from super expensive to really cheap, from more dressy boots all the way to work casual boots. So I think we've got a pretty good variety and it'll give you a really nice view of the full spectrum of chuck -a boots on what's available. So whether you want to buy one of these, these boots or go out and judge on a chuck -a boot out in the wild, you'll have some points of reference to, to judge quality, value, and durability. And I wanted to start with Jim Green's because Jim Green's has kind of made a big splash in the boot world over the last year, especially in the US market because they were, they're, they're a South African company and a lot of people like them because they're, they're more work-centered boot, but at a really good price. And, and maybe the most interesting thing about Jim Green's and what allows them to sell pretty good boots for a really affordable price is they have really favorable, favorable import fees and, and tariffs and their exchange rate is really in favor of buying a South African made product. If you want a little bit more information on what that even means, I covered it a little bit better in the Razorback video, so go check that video out. Now let's go over the shoe information. So the brand is obviously Jim Green's. The model is the Veli, but it's pronounced Feli. And it comes in a lot of different colors. It comes in khaki, chestnut, fudge, brown, tan, and black. They weigh one pound, three ounces. They retail for $89 before the discount and they're made in South Africa. And like I said, I did a video on one of Jim Green's other boots. And after that video and with some help from other YouTubers talking about Jim Green's, they basically sold out of all their US stock. And so when this video came around, there, there wasn't really much left in the US to order. So what they're gonna do is for this video, if you decide to buy these boots or through this series, they're, they're gonna make them in a big batch in South Africa and ship them in a huge container all the way to the US to fill orders and restock. And that's really, that's good, that's good for you guys because they're doing it in a batch and it's a pre-order that leaves a little bit of wiggle room for a discount. So Jim Green's is doing 10% off of these fellies, but also some of their other boots. The Razorbacks that we reviewed last time, the Razorback Steel Toes, the Stockmans, the Monster Waterproof, and the Outback Slip-Ons. So check them all out, go to the description, get those codes, click on the links if you're interested in buying this boot or any of the other boots. And thanks again to Jim Green for sponsoring this video. So now let's go over the information that we can gather about this boot before we cut it in half, starting with the leather. So this is a full grain chrome tanned leather. It's 2.2 millimeters thick and it's a rough out leather. So a lot of people like rough out leather because they, they flip that soft grain pattern on the inside and this the fuzzy uh, flesh side is a little bit more abrasion resistant. So if you if you cut this side, it doesn't really split open like the grain size side does. It more the knife kind of moves around the fibers and the fibers are so big that it doesn't really have as much of an impact when you cut it. And then to the lining, there is no lining. And that's another thing I like about chuckas in general and specifically this, you don't want an extra lining in there. It's not gonna give you any more durability. It's just gonna make it more hot and less breathable. So I'm glad there's no lining in this. On to the construction. Another really simple construction is just a stitch down construction where instead of the upper being tucked underneath and having a welt sewn to it, it's flanged out and then stitched to the midsole. And it's double stitched with 2.2 millimeter braided nylon cord just for extra durability. Moving to the insole. So this is a removable insole and it's the same insole that was in the razor back so you've got that calfskin lining on top and then the compressed board underneath with a little patch of pour on at the heel. Uh, it's removable so if you hate it you can replace it. If you need more arch support you can replace it and you know it's not the best insult or insert or insole but this is a sub $100 boot and you could swap it out. On to the midsole. The midsole is made out of a polyester based board. It's kind of like a harder more dense uh, fiber board that's not as fragile and it's it's kind of a cheaper alternative to leather It acts similar to leather because it's flexible. It's breathable. It, it has that fiber structure So it doesn't just crack and split uh, But it's not as good as leather you kind of get what you pay for and then onto the outsole So this is a pure rubber Jim Green branded R4 compound outsole and it's supported by a steel shank on the inside here Allegedly, we'll see what's cut in half. And that's one thing I hated about the Clarks. You don't have any support right where it matters most, where you have that drop off at the hill. The durability or the durometer of this outsole is around 65. So not super hard, but it gets still some squish compared to the Clark's, which is 35. So 
that's kind of where we're starting to see the difference between these boots. You know, a thicker leather, a harder outsole, it's gonna last longer. It's not gonna be as comfortable as a soft outsole, but it's gonna last a lot longer. And because this outsole isn't stitched on, it's just glued on in a similar way of how wedge soles are, once this wears out, any cobbler will be able to put a new outsole on for really cheap, or you can do it at home if you're pretty handy. You just peel it off and glue a new one on because you don't have to deal with any of the stitching. Finally, to the fit, feel, and look, which might be one of the more important aspects of this shoe or boot because the, the, the fit of these boots is, is awesome, especially if you like a wider toe box. One of the best things about Jim Green's is the wide toe box. You know, you got lots of wiggle room for your toes. If you got wide feet, a lot of people love Jim Green's for that, but you're sacrificing the look of these boots for that extra wide toe box. You know, you definitely have a little bit of that wider look to it. And then as for how they feel underfoot, they're pretty they're pretty hard underfoot. You know, you don't have that soft uh, crepe outsole. It's a pretty tough, sturdy outsole. You don't really have much cushioning through the midsole. And then the insole itself, you know, you got that pour on, but it's not super soft and squishy. And the last thing I'll say about the look of these boots is, is they kind of, they're somewhere in between a work boot and a, a casual boot. You know, you can wear these pretty casually and get away with it, but you, you wouldn't want to wear these with a suit and tie. Um, but you could also wear these to work, but you wouldn't want to have these as a dedicated work boot that you're planning on lasting a super long time. So let's cut them in half. All right, we got them cut in half. Let's see what's inside. So no, no huge surprises on the inside. I am glad that there are some voids in the heel because it's a harder rubber and that much solid rubber at the heel is just gonna make it heavier and it won't give you any squish, but with these little columns in here it allows it to give you just a little squish for a little bit more comfort once they're broken in and i don't like to see huge voids like this if it was a soft outsole like sometimes you see in the crepe or like the foam rubber soles but this works for this and one thing i didn't note previously was the counter cover this is a this is an awesome counter cover because so many boots especially under the 150 dollars they put cheap counter covers and it's always what wears out. They either put like a fabric in there or really thin split leather. This is a full grain leather, the same leather using the upper as a counter cover. So you're not ever gonna have to worry about that wearing out. So that's, that kind of seems to be the theme of this boot. Everything that matters and that's gonna give you the longevity of the boot that you want, they keep high quality and upgrade it. And the things that don't matter as much that maybe don't, that maybe give you a little bit more comfort or slightly more durability, they, that's where they, they find that value and get that price lower by finding some substitutes. So now let's go through the pros and cons because there's no reason to go through the layers. It's pretty simple. So pros, the wide toe box. That's gonna be a huge pro for a lot of people. And then the next pro is the durability of this boot. For under $100, you get a pretty durable outsole. You've got a durable, thick leather upper. You've got that durable stitching and construction. But due to that focus on durability, that's where you get a lot of the cons. You don't have quite as nice looking boot. You don't get that slim, sleek silhouette that you a lot of people want in a chuck a boot. And comfort gets sacrificed. You know, with a hard, durable outsole, you don't get a squishy and comfortable feel. With the hard upper, it's gonna take a little bit longer to, to start breaking in. And because of that lower price, you're not getting premium materials through the entire boot. You know, you're, there's some sacrifices that need to be made to get to that price point, like this harder, less durable midsole 
and I didn't talk about the counter and, and toe stiffener. You know, it's, it's a thermal plastic and these are known to split on occasion, but this is pretty standard for the price range you see. So overall, what do I think of these boots? I think they'd be a really good light duty work boot, a summer work boot, or just a casual durable boot that you can wear just like a normal shoe. It's kind of like the worker bee or like the more industrial version of a Clark's. You know, every everything's just more tough and durable, but less comfortable. So, and I think maybe the best application for this boot, if you just, unless you just want it for the look of it and the brand, is if you're the type of person that wishes they could wear their sneakers to work, because you want that lightweight, that breathability, that comfort of a sneaker without having a huge, tall, heavy boot, these are a good way to get that feeling and get those aspects that you want, but with a lot more of the durability that you're not ever gonna get from a sneaker. It's a really interesting compromise between comfort and durability and look. It kind of just mixes all of them in a really good way. Jim Green's really setting the bar pretty high in the value aspect of this series. You know, for under 100 bucks, you're getting a lot of really good features. Um, so let me know what you guys think. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss the rest of the Chuck -a Boot series. And thanks again to Jim Green's for sponsoring this video. If you want 10% off of these or the other boots that I mentioned previously, don't forget to use the codes in the description and the links in the description. And thank you, thank you guys so much for everything you do. I love doing series, they're so fun. I had no interest in Chuck -a Boots until I started this series and now I'm obsessed with them. So thank you guys, see ya.